So Joe Biden gave a press conference. First, first Donald Trump gave a press conference. They hammered him. They hit, you know, you know the questions. I'm not even going to play anything from that. You know what it is. Like, how terrible are you? Are you a Nazi? Like, is there a difference between Hitler? Did Hitler really kill himself or has he been reincarnated as you? Those are the questions that Donald Trump gets. Joe Biden <laughs> gives a press conference. So help me. So help me. He gives a press conference. And the first question is from the Atlantic, asking him about the Atlantic. But we just put together a montage of the questions he was asked. This is, it's unbelievable. Listen to this. Last night, President Trump mocked you for wearing a mask and said that this is a sign that you must have some, quote, big issues. He says this even though he knows that, according to scientists and public health officials, wearing masks saves lives. Let me ask you about another thing the president said last night. He once again suggested to his supporters that they should consider voting twice if they're in one of those states that can allow you to request an absentee ballot, say, fill that out and then go try voting again in person. State officials have said it's a felony. When you hear these remarks, suckers, losers, recoiling from amputees, what does it tell you about President Trump's soul? You said today is the angriest you've, you've been as a presidential candidate. Um, but you said you're trying to restrain yourself. Aren't there are a lot of people out there who are supporting you or are inclined to not vote for the president who would say, why isn't Joe Biden angrier? <laughs> How does he do it? How does Joe field those questions? How does he stand up to the questions about uh, his judgment of President Trump's soul. It's really hard to hard to know how he, you know, how where he gets the mental acuity, where he has the mental acuity and the, you know, at his age that he has the, you know, the stamina to stand up to that kind of hammering. Here's Trump's response. Uh, cut twenty five. I watched the interview with Sleepy Joe Biden, and he didn't ask questions. You didn't ask questions like that. Read the questions. Yes, they were like meant for a child. Those questions were meant for a child. Smiles on faces of reporters, not like you and you. There were smiles on the reporters. What do you think? Take a look at those questions that they ask him. They were not meant for a grown up. They were meant for a child. Fact check true, I got to say. I mean, that, that really is, they really were questions for a child. And I'll tell you something else. It makes me wonder, it makes me wonder what they think of us. You know, how stupid do they think we are. Do they think they're invisible? Do they think we look at that and think like, I didn't see anything. The same questions as when they asked Donald Trump. Maybe they, what they think is, oh, well, you know, their opinion of Donald Trump, it, it must be the right one because they're the press after all. I mean, how deluded are they? I guess, I guess they think it's going to work on somebody if it only, I think this is, is what they think actually. If it only works on one voter, if it only works on 10 voters, if it only works on a thousand voters, maybe they swing a state. Listen to why they're doing it, though. Biden was doing one of those virtual events where he got where kids asked him questions and he got scripted questions from the kids were asking him scripted questions. Here's his response. Cut 22. What will your administration do to help them give them that chance? Thank you. Move it up here. <laughs> you know, there used to be a basic bargain in this country. Workers shared in the wealth their work helped create. <laughs> so move it up here is move the prompter, the teleprompter up. He can't answer a question, a scripted question without the teleprompter. And maybe somebody's typing it in as he speaks. He can't answer a scripted question without the teleprompter. And he can't even keep from saying, you got to move it up here because I can't see. I mean, he looks like he's dead. You know, I mean, it, 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 senescent was one thing, but dead, you know. I, it really, it really is something. Molly Hemingway had a really interesting piece over the weekend at The Federalist. It was called The Media Are Lying About the Election Again. And I have to praise Molly's persistence in continuing to keep uh, the media as a plural noun. I finally caved in, you know, the media are uh, lying about the election. I finally caved in. I came to believe that the media has now become single, a singular noun. So I just say the media is lying. So here's, here's what she says. Election 2020 is shaping up to be deja vu all over again for the news media. In an effort to help push Joe Biden over the finish line, the Washington establishment is going all in on the easily refuted idea that there has been no change in the presidential race over the last three weeks. She then quotes a number of stories with two months to go, a steady presidential race. That's from the Cook Political Report, the latest polls, the great non-tightening. OK, that's from The New York Times. In a time of disruption and unrest, the presidential race has changed little. The Washington Post. Now, this is what I've been seeing in the polls as well. 
So here's what Molly says. After having botched the entire news coverage of the 2016 election, where all the experts repeatedly told the American public that Donald Trump had little to no chance of being the Republican nominee and even less chance of being elected president, corporate media are back at it again, insisting all is well with the Biden campaign and the Democrats are safely on cruise control to take the White House and the Senate. Now, just just to remind you what this was like here from our friends at Newsbusters, right? Is they have like a thing where they take you back in time, a flashback thing. Here, exactly four years ago today, is the report on CBS at what the Electoral College is going to look like for Trump versus Hillary. Cut one. You'll hear a lot about Ohio, of course. You'll hear about Florida. He's got to win those states. He's got a narrow path. He can do it, Mm -hmm. but he's got to start picking them off. But, Anthony, the way you've got this now, likely 341 electoral votes for Hillary Clinton. You only need 270 to win. That suggests a blowout. It, It does at this point. You know, it's not over, but it does. You know, it's even the case now where we've started to see some reliably Republican states, places like Georgia, places like Arizona that just don't vote Democratic, have started to get close. And Clinton is within striking distance there. (laughs) <laughs> All right. So that was four years ago today. So here's what Molly says. Molly says, here's the truth. They're not telling you. This is Molly Hemingway at The Federalist. She says, Biden has little enthusiasm for his candidate. He's taking on an incumbent president with significant first term accomplishments who has extremely energized supporters, to put it mildly. He had two ma- Biden had two major opportunities in August to generate some real excitement for his ticket and collect voters in must win states for Democrats who had abandoned the ticket for Trump. In 2016, Biden whiffed on both counts, picking a far left California senator who has the farthest left voting record of her colleagues, then hosting a convention and giving an acceptance speech where he did nothing to take on the ascending left that potential voters he needs to win have serious concerns and doubts about. By contrast, Trump and the Republicans aggressively went after traditionally Democrat Party voters. She says, here's the cold reality. The media are for some reason refusing to tell people as the country rounds Labor Day and this campaign really gets into high gear. The race is effectively tied today. Trump has momentum and Biden is going to have to campaign hard, energize his voters and earn it if he hopes to unseat the incumbent. She takes the polls and she shows how Biden's lead has narrowed to within the margin of error. And in many um, uh, battleground states, it has virtually disappeared. And, you know, that analysis just seems to strike more with my common sense. And it's interesting because if she's wrong and if my common sense is wrong, then we've lost the country. The country is, has been lost to this race theory and this, you know, idea, this systemic uh, race idea that is basically a front for Marxism. So we, if, if Molly is wrong and this common sense uh, narrative is not true, it, it means a lot. It means we really did lose the country and the culture has got away from us. Politico has done something revolutionary. Politico has actually hired reporters to cover the states that reporters never go to, right? And they say this, while national polls have generated a portrait of Biden holding a commanding lead, it's something of a mirage. In the swing states that matter, it's trench warfare. Biden's advantage, according to the Real Clear Politics polling average, is within the margin of error in half of the eight states. And Trump is a president whose support has been notoriously difficult for pollsters to survey. They say, consider this fact. From July 2016 uh, until Election Day in the three Rust Belt states that Trump unexpectedly picked off, Michigan, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, 94 public polls were released. Trump led in just three of them. You know. It is an interesting thing when you lose the uh, a press that you can respect and believe in. It is it is a terrible, terrible thing for a free country to have the press go bad. The press has broken bad. That's really true. They've really gone. Uh, they, they were doing it before. Using Trump as an excuse, as Bill McGurn said, is just an excuse because they did treat Bush this way and they did treat Obama, a, a terribly incompetent and corrupt president. They treated him like he was the second coming. They said They said as much. So when you lose the press, you lose the ability to trust information. And I've said this before, that you start to believe anything because you have nothing to know. You don't know where the facts lie. But common sense does tell me that this race is narrowing. It's very early still. It's still early in the game. And it's going to be really interesting to see when the votes come in, just how far off or how correct these polls were, because then we'll know. Then we'll know a little bit more about the truth of this country. (laughs) 